Leon Edwards and Bilal Muhammad. Only thing I gotta say, Kush, I told you so. I told you so. I think Bilal Muhammad is very problematic. I think Bilal Muhammad had a really good game plan, and it's finally until somebody and you did it that second fight with uh, with, with Leon Edwards. Like that's that that the second time you fought him, I was there live uh, before the you know before the freaking kick came in. You're fighting the perfect fight, putting him against the cage, taking him down, faking, uh, locking your hands, pulling him off, setting his, setting his ass, setting his ass down, and I almost feel like a guy like Bilal Muhammad saw that, and I'm gonna fight. Okay, if he wants to be near the cage, I'm gonna go ahead and strike with them, to strike with them, strike with them, take away his leg kick because I'm gonna be more like that boxing range. And I'm going to look for my takedowns. And that's exactly what he did. And a lot of things that is a little bit underrated with the guy like Bilal Muhammad is he's got these little subtle fakes. Not just his little subtle fakes, Kush, but also his jabs. He be jabbing you like right. Like he's super comfortable throwing that jab. He's legit getting it. But he's right in your face. Like if you allow Bilal Muhammad to to put you against the cage when you're fighting his fight. The time that Leon Edwards started, got, started kind of going more into the center, he started to have a little more success defending the takedowns. I mean, there was a lot from round one from what Bilal Muhammad was able to do, start the pace. The only, the only round that I saw, because pr practically the whole fight was pretty much the same, the only round that I saw Bilal Muhammad, uh, Bilal Muhammad lose was round three. And it was pretty much just Leon Edwards took the back, didn't do any damage, didn't do anything. Uh, towards the end of the fifth, he did rain elbows, but other than that, a lot of what Bilal Muhammad did, there's a lot of mistakes also that Leon Edwards did, staying in off four position, allowing Leon to throw the legs in, like just stupid, like little amateur things like that. You know, not, not taking any credit from a guy like Bilal Muhammad, but there's a lot of stupid mistakes that a guy like Leon Edwards did number one, staying staying two three feet, uh, you know, against the cage, and then and then allowing him to get taken down, and then allowing not just the takedown because you can get back up, you can fatigue somebody by just getting back up as well, but allowing a guy like Leon Edwards, uh, allowing a guy like Bilal Muhammad throw the legs in pretty much without a fight. I mean, I'm looking at this fight as a whole, and I'm just thinking, it's like, man, there's a lot of people up for grabs for this fight. But stylistically, with you and him, I, I, I just see. I just. I, I think it's the biggest fight at the welterweight division. What's your take on this fight, Kush? I agree with you, Henry. I think, um, and I said this before. Um, Leon. The only way that Leon really flips that switch is if he believes he's the champion. And you know that famous quote that uh, who was it? Uh, Teddy Atlas said is, is once you become a champion, you become 30% better overnight is all that means is that belief in that delusion that you are the best. You really believe it. it's solidified. And so that gives you that confidence to where you, you believe I'm the best. So now you're free to really experiment and throw things that, you know, and do things and throw things that you didn't think you were capable of doing before. I know when I became the champion, when I fought Tyron Woodley, I felt before, I would say maybe two years before that, that I was the best in the world. And then I got the opportunity to actually compete with Tyron Woodley. And I went out there and proved that I was the best in the world. And then after that, I fought Kobe Covington in that fight that I, to me, was one of my most, fate, my, one of my favorite fights just because of the back and forth, the way we're, that we were able to commit to just tr fighting each other. And then I felt free. At that point, I was, okay, let's work on the strike and let's work on this and that. And let's start putting these boys away because I know I'm the best. Let's start knocking these guys out. Now, the problem with Leon is that's where I remember I said this before this fight. I said, if Leon believes that he is truly the best, then I do see it going for Leon. But with a guy like Bilal Muhammad, Bilal was going to go like this. And you saw that in the whole fight. Nothing changed for Bilal. He just was this pace the whole time. Now, I, I, had to fight, I fought Leon three times. I would say a majority of all, the, all those fights, Leon put his back up against the cage. Well, he didn't put his back there. I put him there. 
up against the cage. When you pressure him, you pressure him, you pressure him, you take away his space. Leon just doesn't necessarily know how to fight there when you take away his space. He wants to create the space, so he backs up. And when he backs up, next thing you know, he puts himself up against the cage. Now, when you fight a guy like myself and a guy like Bilal Muhammad that can change levels on you, hey, this is what you're going to get. We're going to change levels. We're going to uh, uh, we're gonna wrap our arms around your legs, and we're going to take you down every time. And that's what I did in almost every one of my fights. But Leon, over the time, got smart enough to know that, hey, I can use the cage as to my advantage to stand up or to keep myself upright and make it harder for people to keep me down. And that's what he was doing. But... There's always, there's always, it's almost like, okay, he counters what I do, which is to put him up against the fence, take him down by using the fence to stand back up and stay upright. But then here comes the counter, the, the counter counter, shall I say, in Bilal Muhammad in understanding that, hey, he uses the fence very well to stand back up. So when he does stand back up, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change levels back again, and I'm going to dump him either on his head or I'm going to dump him on his back again. And this was textbook. Henry, if you watch this fight, is there anything different that that Bilal Muhammad did than what I do I did to Leon in, in uh, yeah. fight uh, one or fight two? Um, yes, and it was just one thing. All Which the entries right. were pretty much the same. Yes, it was the fact that this is the fact that it was the fact that Bilal Muhammad was actually taking the back, and he was taking the back, and he was actually the way he was wrapping that right that right that, that outside leg inside the thigh. So I think right. when when you get to, and this is something that I have to start doing too, start taking people down and start literally taking backs because when you take a back, you, you control the round. Yeah, you may not damage them, your opponent may not, but the one thing you I will say is you are controlling the time. So if that, so if they so if you so if you're asking me tomorrow. You're absolutely a lot right. of similarities right. that you guys have, but the biggest thing is he was able to control and take the back and just take more of the time. 100%. You're absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head. Bilal committed to controlling Leon a lot more to where I was committed to. I wanted to damage. I wanted to be in a position to where I could posture up and hit him. I could, I could basically be over him, hitting him, or to the side hitting him. I risk being in that position as opposed to Bilal who wanted to control him. And Bilal did a phenomenal job controlling him. Bilal was able to take the back. Yes, the, the shots weren't as damaging, but he controlled him for the most part. There was a couple of, you know, mistakes there to where he was locking his feet in between Leon's leg as opposed to what Leon was doing when he had the back, which is put the body triangle onto the side behind that thigh, which it, it was, I mean, there was mistakes on both parts, but the game plan stays the same. To beat a guy like Leon, Leon needs space because he's a sharp shooter. And I also said this, Henry. The reason why Leon is not feared on his stand-up like that is because Leon is not necessarily a combination puncher. He's not going to put a one, two, three together, slip the head, uppercut, bot, right hook, left. He's not necessarily going to do that out in, in space. Leon is a sharp shooter. I can touch you with, with, with this jab straight. Follow with the kick, then I have to reset. Or jab, kick, then I have to reset. That's a Leon. But you need space in order to do that. And Bilal Muhammad did the exact thing that you should do with a guy like this. Take away the space. And when you take away the space, first and foremost, the strikes don't hurt as bad if you're smothering them. You take away the strikes from, from Leon. He can't use his kicks because you took the space away. And now he has to grapple with you. And if he's not conditioned enough to grapple with you, Nine times out of ten, he's going to lose that fight. And that's what we saw there. Yes, it wasn't the most exciting fight, but Leon did what he had to do to get the win. Uh, well, not Leon, for, uh, Bilal. Bilal did a, everything, exactly what he needed to do to get the win, and that's smother him, take him down, hold him, beat him down, beat him up whenever you get the chance, and now we have a new champion. Yeah, no, it's almost like what you said, man. It's like... uh Bilal Muhammad, we, we keep from what some whatever reason we keep trying to say, Leon, even even Daniel Corbin said at the end, congratulations, <laughs> Leon Rocky, oh, Bilal Muhammad. <laughs> you know, but 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 I, but I can see where it is because a lot of people don't believe it. Still, it's almost like what? 
Like Leon, the guy that beat Kamara Usman, Leon, the guy that beat Kobe, Leon, the, you know, Leon Rocky Edwards. But it's true. When you get somebody that's able to make you backpedal and they're really good at what they do and they keep that certain threshold the whole time, it's very, very dangerous. I mean, I don't know if it was a fourth. I don't know if it was a fourth or third round. And and, and a lot of people are not really, I mean, a lot of people don't know like the, like the effects of picking somebody up and then dropping them on their head. And that was one of the biggest things that I that I think that really changed the course of the fight too cuz man that's a concussion. And, you know if you notice yeah. he kind of went a bit he kind of went a bit limp a little bit but dude he could have been too concussed in the fight too. You know concussions to me are a lot worse than knockouts because you're there but you're halfway there. And then you allow other things to kind of sneak in and then and then the damage kind of starts to take place. I mean granted I think I think there's a lot of things that that a guy like Leon Edwards did, but finally Kamaru, the, the the bad habits that Leon was doing in the past has just caught up to him. I mean, yeah, can sure. can you put him against the cage like as he wants to? Because as you said, he cannot fight. He cannot fight kind of going backwards, but can you control? Can you take him back? And I think that was just the biggest difference. Yes, and, and also the, the combination, like I said, Leon is not necessarily a combination guy in the center of the cage. And and hold that position to find the he's he's not he's not that guy. Leon has a great combination. It's a leadoff combination. One, two, three, kick. But I have to reset and then find, okay, when is the time to go again? You know, he's that guy. But all to beat that style, all you have to do is step into it. You smother that. And when you smother him, he wants to create space. He needs space. So he steps back to try to create that space. But you take one or two steps backwards, guess what? You're on the black line. Now you get yeah. to feel the cage. And so yeah. and there's this, this bad habit of this, this – well, it's not I – I don't want to say it's a bad habit because some people are effective with that type of block when they do this. This thing that Dustin Poirier does to try to potentially get you to hit the elbow to potentially break your, your hand. But – it was it was actually not it was a one i would say that the best strike that Bilal was throwing is Bilal was was able to read it and Bilal was sneaking uppercuts in through there and he landed a couple of them i, I believe and so it was great but you see you just look at the fight it was almost leon couldn't hold that center position even when he did try to put a combination together which is one of the two or three punches it was almost the third punch was sloppy. His chin was up. It was just like whiffing just to try to create some type of space. And Bilal didn't give that to him. And so it, it's very difficult to fight a style like that if you are not prepared to grapple. And obviously looking at that division right now, there's only a, a select few guys that are willing to grapple a, a, like that. And those are the guys who are going to have success there because – they were, were at a, sp a specific spot to where we could do everything remotely well. And yeah, no, of course. And, and, and you know what this tells me too, Kamaru, is you can be a good striker. You could be a great striker, but not everybody, not not every striker knows how to fight backwards. I mean, if you go back and watch that fight with Israel, I did, Sanya. I mean, notice how pressures would kill them. You know what I'm saying? Pressures would pretty much kill the guy like Bilal Muhammad. And I'm I'm also thinking of uh, the blueprint of a fight between the uh, between Sean O'Malley and and uh, between Sean O'Malley and uh, and Marab Davalishvili is like could you know Marab Davalishvili could pretty much implement the same damn thing. You press him, get him against the cage, and one thing that Leon Edwards was doing wrong is he was he was defending right against the cage, and when you're defending right against the cage. And you do this, you leave your legs open. So if you are going to be three feet against the cage, you're going to have to be careful with defending. You're either going to have to go or 